This weekend sees the return of the biggest pro race on the cycling calendar, the Tour de France. In this video, I'm going to take a look at some of my favourite moments from the Tour de France. Uh, probably a bit more personal than some of the well-known moments of the past, some of the iconic moments. But here's a few of my favourites. I hope you enjoy. Let me know in the comments your favourite Tour de France moments. And let's look forward to a brilliant, brilliant 2024 edition. Museo wins at Mont Saint-Michel, the 3rd of July, 1990. Now, this stage to any cycling fan would be a largely forgettable sprint stage. It was a 200 kilometre flat stage that went from Nantes into Mont Saint-Michel. But for me, it was my first live experience of the Tour de France. Um, whether it was poor planning or not, I'll never know, but this stage coincided with my school's end of year trip to France. So on that day, we landed slap bang into the middle of the tour caravan. I can remember the sights, the smells, the blistering heat, the Euro pop coming out of the caravan as people threw all kinds of tap to the fans everywhere and people just lapped it up. Um, Z Tommaso were the team of the moment. They had uh, the reigning Mayo Jeune in Greg Le Monde in their ranks um, and he was their leader for the 1990 tour and he'd go on to win it um, for, the, for a consecutive year after winning the infamous three weeks, eight second tour of uh, 1989. Um, but the day I was there was a day for another one of my heroes, uh, the Lion of Flanders, Johan Museu. Um, he was quite early into his career and his two stages at that 1990 tour were a precursor to what would end up as one of the greatest Palmares in the sport. One that includes three Ronde van Vlaanderen wins uh, three Paris Roubaix wins and a world championship um, amongst many other titles. Um, I left Mont Saint Michel that day dripping in Z Tommaso, Z Vetement merch, um, a fan forever, uh, having seen so many legendary cyclists that day, like Le Mans, Fignon. Delgado, Kelly, Van der Poel Senior, Ciappucci, Stephen Roach, they all crossed the line that day. It was brilliant. Le Mans, eight seconds, Paris, 23rd of July, 1989. So I referenced this in the previous uh, the previous memory. So I'll, I'll talk about it now. It's quite possibly one of the greatest and most famous last minute turnarounds in sports history. Um, Going into the final stage, Le Mans trailed the home favourite, Laurent Fignon, by 50 seconds. Um, 
and that was an individual time trial from Versailles to the Champs Elysees on Paris in Paris. While it may not seem like a big time gap to to overthrow and swing in your favour, the distance from Versailles to Paris is about it's a shade under twenty five kilometres, which is incredible. It was drama of the highest order. The commentary on the TV was just as enthralling as the pictures, and it's well worth checking out on YouTube. Um, seriously, it's worth all the moments of your time to watch it. Carlos Rodriguez wins stage 14, Mortsine, 15th of July, 2023. Uh, stage 14 of the 2023 tour saw the riders take on a 152 kilometer stage uh, from Animas to Mortsin, and it included climbs such as the Col de Coup, the Col de Feu, the Col de la Ramaz, and the Col de Juplin. And that was for nearly 4,200 meters of vertical. Um, the Juplin, the or category final climb is famous for being the place where Lance Armstrong said he had his worst day on a bike um, as that mountain broke him. So the riders really had a tough day ahead of them. Um, Carlos Rodriguez kept pace that day uh, with Pogacar and Vingago um, and he eventually got the, got the slip on them and um, on the descent into Morsin, I think he won by about five seconds. Um, and it was, it was a brutal stage. It included a couple of really nasty crashes in the earlier, the earlier parts of the day. Um, but that stage held a bigger significance for me um, as I'd ridden that stage the week before for the adapter door. Um, the attack is the greatest single challenge I've ever taken on involving a bicycle. Um, and although I took about six and a half hours longer than Rodriguez did to complete that stage, it was an incredible experience. I was hurting by the time I got to the Somayan Tunnel halfway up the Col de la Ramaz. But I didn't want it to end. It was such an incredible ride. People were already pitching up, waiting for the tour to come through a week later. Um, so we got to ride some of the climbs with a company in Cowbell uh, and people standing on top of their camper vans, belting out Europot. Uh, local kids were coming out, offering us a hose down or a super stoke with some refreshing cold water and all of that was gratefully received. Um, the beauty of those alpine climbs and wonderfully slick, fast descents on closed roads wasn't lost on me, um, particularly when you consider the potholed roads of the UK. Uh, it's a beautiful place that I want to return to. Um, the heat that day was incredible. It was touching 40 degrees on the road. So for me, a little podgy bloke to be one of the 11,000 people that finished out of about 16,000 starters was incredibly satisfying. And I proved to myself that day that I can do anything that I put my mind to. Pidcock descends the Galibia, 14th of July, 2022. Uh, on his way to his maiden tour stage victory atop the Alpe d'Huez, Tom Pidcock produced a descending masterclass for the ages off the cold of Galibia. Uh, words don't do this justice. It has to be watched in full. YouTube it, sit back, a marvel at the speed and lines he takes to put himself right in the mix for the stage. It is incredible. We go leads out Cav, 12th of July, 2022. 
22nd of July, 2012. 2012 was a Anus Marebalus for Bradley Wiggins, I think that's the term. He'd already had the GCs from Paris Nice, uh, Romandie, and the Dauphiné under his belt. And now here he was about to win the Tour de France. He'd later go on to win the Olympic gold medal for the individual time trial. In the all-conquering sky, they also had the world champion in Mark Cavendish, uh, now Sir Mark. Um, and they headed to Paris with thoughts of a fourth victory in four years for Cavendish on the Champs-Élysées firmly in their heads. The plan was executed with the ruthless efficiency that we came to know Team Sky about. Um, and Cav eased to victory. But in what is largely a ceremonial stage into Paris... It was incredible to see the Mayor Jean pulling on the front of the bunch to deliver his great power to the win. I don't think we will ever see the yellow jersey leading out the rainbow jersey in Paris again. It was iconic. Mike Turnson wins in Brussels, 6th of July, 2019. Jumbo Visma went into the start of the 2019 tour with one plan for stage one. Deliver Dylan Groenewegen into the line to win the sprint and the first yellow jersey of the tour. However, cycling is an unpredictable sport at the best of times. Uh, best laid plans have very rarely come to fruition and so it would prove to be that day in Brussels. Um, Groenewegen would crash about three kilometres from the line leaving his final lead out man Mike Turnison with a dilemma of what to do next. Um, thankfully, Mike decided to take the sprint on himself. Um, and while the commentators prepared themselves for a Peter Sagan yellow jersey loving, Mike crept up the outside and beat Sagan by a tie width. I know Mike a little bit. We'd been to meet him at Paris Roubaix that year. He's a really nice lad, and I was so excited for him. He'd go on to wear the Mayo Jeune on stages two and three, uh, where Julien Alaphilippe would take the jersey from him. Um, but that wasn't the end of Mike's flirtation with Grand Tour jerseys, as he'd wear the Mayo Rojo in La Vuelta after Jumbo Visma won the team time trial on stage one in 2022. So he just has a pink one to go for the full set. And that would be amazing. So, back to this year's tour. I really hope that everyone's fit. Because I want to see a good, hard battle across the three weeks. Um, I'm really looking forward to no procession in Paris. I'm looking forward to a last day time trial. I think that should be great fun. Especially around Nice. It should be amazing. Um, I'd obviously like to see Sir Mark Cavendish take the record for the most staged wins in the Tour with a sprint win somewhere along the line. And I'd love it if Mike and the Intermarche boys could get a stage or two. Uh, that'd, that'd really be a nice, a nice thing for him for all the work that he's put in um, as a former yellow jersey wearer. Uh, overall, if I had to pick one, I'm going with Pog. I think he's the best cyclist out there. Uh, he looked in great form in the Giro. Um, although that's a grand tour in his legs, didn't really have to do too much. So I'm going with him. Pogacar for the win. So let's see what happens.